And today's custom budget PC is fitted into this Deepcool Matrix 55 V4C PC case. The stock ARGB fans that originally came with the case were replaced with six ARGB aftermarket fans, plus the ARGB offering from this Thermorite CPU cooler. The fan hub that controls the speed and the color scheme is installed into the back of the computer. Right now I have the colors tuned to this kind of orange gold color that I think looks really cool. What's nice is that the LED strip on the case fan can be plugged into the controller so it matches the color of the case fans. Here on the top of the PC case we have a USB 3, USB 2, and microphone and headphone jacks. The front of this PC case has a tempered glass panel but as you can see on the side there is ventilation for air intake over here too. There's also a little intake here at the bottom. Let's get the side panel off to get a better look at the inside. Not a bad look at all. Underneath this Thermoride Assassin Spirit V2 CPU cooler with a Thermoride ARGB fan, there's a Ryzen 5 7500F CPU with 6 cores and 12 threads. And beside that, there's 32GB of Timetech branded DDR5 5600MHz RAM. No fancy heat sinks, as we're sticking to a budget. And this would be the Sapphire Pulse Radeon RX 6800 graphics card with 16GB of GDDR6 memory. As noted on the Tech Power Up website, we have a boost in clock speeds and theoretical performance with this version of the card. And this is all packed onto an ASRock B650M-H slash M.2 Plus motherboard. Here's the box over here for reference. Though this motherboard does support PCIe Gen 5 speeds, I don't have the applicable SSD, so I installed this Timetech 1TB M810 NVMe solid state drive running at PCIe 3x4 speeds, and I currently have Windows 11 Pro installed. And powering it all is this Corsair RM750X 750 watt power supply. Now under the rear I.O. of the motherboard, you'll notice that there is a punch out for Wi-Fi antenna. And in fact, right below the GPU, there is an M.2 port for a Wi-Fi card. I just don't have the antenna to run through at the moment. There's a display port and an HDMI port that we can't use with the CPU because there are no integrated graphics a BIOS flashback button, 2x USB 2.0, one that can be used to install different BIOS versions, 1x USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C port, and 3x USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A, Gigabit RJ45 Ethernet port, audio jacks, and the RX 6800 features 1x HDMI 2.1 and 3x DisplayPort 1.4A. I'm a pretty big fan of how this PC turned out, I think it looks really nice. And just for reference, here's what it looks like if you do change the colors. And now let's check out the video render and video encoding tests with this hardware setup. So using DaVinci Resolve 19 and 11 minutes of raw 1080p footage to render under the H.64 format, I compared the last two builds I did with the 7500F CPU, one with the RX 6800 and one with the RTX 3070. Also, you'll note that one has 32GB of 5600MHz RAM, while the other has 16GB of 4800MHz RAM. And the results show that the 7500F with the 6800 performs slightly better, rendering at 138 seconds, while the 7500F and RTX 3070 combo rendered at 140 seconds. This bar graph looks a little bit more dramatic, it's only a difference of 2 seconds. But I would have to imagine with longer renders and in a more professional environment, having the advantage of 16GB of VRAM with the 6800 would very likely work out to the advantage of the user. Now moving on to the Handbrake 1.9.0 CPU encoding times with 11 minutes of 1080p game footage under the H.64 preset and Creator 1080p 60 preset. Measuring the same two setups as with the DaVinci Resolve results, I had some interesting results, both came in at 140 seconds exactly, and in this particular case, double the RAM and faster RAM speeds did not make a difference. However, this is a small sampling. I do believe that having a little bit more RAM and faster RAM speeds will work to the benefit of the user, 
especially in a more professional environment. And now moving on to the Handbrake GPU encoding test with the same 11 minutes of 1080p game footage. This time I measured the last time I used a 6800 with a Ryzen 5 5600X and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3600 megahertz RAM. Well, uh, again, my results were exactly the same. Both of them were 50 seconds. Again, this is a very small sample set, so take this as it is. I'm only going off the information that I've collected personally. I think with longer video files under different circumstances, having the advantage of DDR5 RAM and a AM5 CPU as opposed to DDR4 and an AM4 would likely make a difference. Definitely let me know in the comments if you're experiencing something different than this. I am certainly not the expert. Now before we move on to the gaming tests, since the last time I checked in with the subscriber count on January 25th, 2025, eight days later it is February 2nd and we're up 31 subscribers. Again a big thank you to anyone who checks out the videos, we really appreciate it. I found that with this fan configuration, the cooling was really good and I was very pleased with the gaming results. So let's check that out and I'll see you in the next video.